Sadhu, Sadhu. Namo Thasya Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasya Namo Thasya Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasya Namo Thasya Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasya Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Supremely Enlightened One, Buddhaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi, Dhammaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi, Saṅgaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi, Dutiyam pe Buddhaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi, Dutiyam pe dhammaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Dutiyam pe saṅgaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Tatiyam pe buddhaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Tatiyam pe dhammaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Tatiyam pe saṅgaṃ saranaṃ Gacchami <clears throat> Do you have any questions? Um, the medita yeah, powerful ideas in the meditation. Um, it, I guess the, the big idea is the, uh, you know, the various feelings, um, you know, they're impermanent and they're not mine, they're not I am and they're not myself just mm -hmm. always kind of struggle with that and i how to think about that not mine not i am not myself and i kind of think about that like the feelings are real but they're kind of i don't know if this is a good way to think about it but they're kind of beside me kind of separate from me i guess that's the idea kind of separate from me real but separate but it's a hard thing to think about not my not I am, not myself, that type of thing. Yeah, the root of suffering is that we try to hold on to things that don't belong to us. That's the whole point of uh, why we suffer. But is that a good way to think about it? That they're yeah, real, yeah, real, but kind of separate from me, beside me, something like that? Yeah, that's the kind of the, the rough idea of non-self. Right. Okay. There are feelings, they are real. Uh, and also there is a person, an individual who experiences feelings and yeah. that individual is named as like, you know, with this name or that name and there is a person, there is an individual. Yeah. But uh, what absent is the self. That means the, the controlling idea, the ownership. That is ownership. what is absence there. Right. Mm -hmm. that, so that we need to realize with developed wisdom. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So now uh, you understand uh, how long that meditation is? We only did only uh, two parts, right? We did one part about Rupa the things that made of four elements we did half an hour last time and then we did the second part of the meditation about the importance of feelings non-self nature of feelings another half an hour right so there are five groups of clinging to be understood so so it's it's kind of a long meditation 
if you can do if you like you can do the entire meditation uh, the insight meditation on five groups of clinging for hours if you are samadhi the concentration uh, the unification of mind the focus of mind is not disturbed by any hindrances you can keep investigating all the five groups of clinging and that's a powerful insight meditation vipassana bhavana and if you if you like to read more about it to explore your understanding you can go to always you can go to connected discourses of the buddha sangyutta nikaya khanda sangyutta there are hundreds of discourses about this meditation and also this vipassana meditation is directly coming from the buddha that's the most important thing any other questions do you like to read something beautiful to start I have one other I have one other question bonte okay just the nature of feelings just how to think about feelings um i'm inclined to think about feelings as being in the mind you know partially but also i guess being in the body but it's a bit confusing if they're in the mind are they a mind consciousness or just a little bit confused about the nature of feelings what are yeah, they where to, where are they yeah in order to develop this wisdom in terms of ending suffering we need to analyze it in this way there are six six classes of feelings and they arise uh in the six sense bases basically and they are related to the six sense bases and they arise on six types of contacts based on six types of contacts so instead of like finding a place where they arise we need to understand this way when what arises feelings arise that's the way we should put it into when what arises feelings arise so then we have the answer when contact arises feelings arise then we can ask um what is the meaning of contact and where do this where does this contact happen then we can say it happens in six sense bases that is why the first one is called eye contact because it happens in the seeing process second one is ear contact it happens in the hearing process third one is the the nose contact it happens in the smelling process fourth one is the tongue contact it happens in the tasting process fifth one is the body contact it happens in the touching process the sixth one is the mind contact and it happens in the thinking process so how do these feelings arise with the arising of contact feelings arise so you're saying focus on how they arise not so much, not where they are or what they are but just how they arise how they arise that's the right. way we need to think because uh, sometimes people ask questions like uh, who feels one day somebody came to the buddha and asked who feels mm -hmm. and buddha said irrelevant question mm -hmm. don't ask the question that way ask the question this way buddha says uh, if you ask who feels 
you will either fall into these two extremes. An external person creates feelings or you yourself creates feelings. You will fall into either of these uh, extremes if you go along with this question. Who mm -hmm. feels? And Buddha corrected the question. And Buddha asked, this is how you should ask the question. With the arising of what feeling arises? Then Buddha said, for that question, I can answer. Because it leads to the ending of suffering. If you question like that, it will lead to the ending of suffering. You will not fall into any extremes. With the arising of what? Feelings arise. Then the person who asked the question for the second time, he asked the question in the right way. In, he asked um, a recluse Gautama, Samana Gautama, uh, with the arising of what feelings arise? Buddha answered, with the arising of contact, feelings arise. Right answer, right question. Relevant question, relevant answer. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. Yeah, so uh, things like that. <clears throat> Bhante, is that um, the same that applies to the mind? Because somebody asked me, where is this mind? Um, so we can explain it in the same way. Uh, if the question is wrong. Um, yeah, there are so uh, many. So the are, mind arises. Maybe some when questions there, are right. Maybe some questions are right. But if uh, if finding answers for those questions, if they if this if they don't lead to the ending of suffering, mm. there's no point of finding answers. There's for example, um, um, where is the beginning of this world? Where is the beginning of this life? Those kind of questions. Like Buddha put aside those kind of questions and Buddha said, okay, start um, investigating the dependent origination starting from um, aging and death. What is the cause of aging and death? Then you get the answer. Birth is the cause of aging and death. Then you investigate. What is the cause of birth? Then you get the answer. Arranging of karma is the cause of birth. And like that, Buddha said, this is the way you should, you should try to understand the beginning of this problem. Not the beginning of world, the beginning of life or origin of this world. Buddha said, those questions I don't ask answer because they don't lead to the disenchantment, they don't lead to the cessation, peace, enlightenment, nibbana, they don't lead to those results. But you invest if you investigate the dependent origination starting from aging and death, and all the way you go to the end called ignorance, you will one day find an end to this suffering. As ordinary people, uh, we have so many uh, questions. We, we try to find answers, and uh, but they don't necessarily lead to the ending of suffering. And Buddha oh. said, many people die without finding answers. Uh, for the entire life, if you try to find answers to those irrelevant questions, uh, mm. we will not find answers and we will still die with unanswered yeah. questions. So like that Buddha, uh, you know, he used to explain any, Buddha said, I have taught you these four noble truths and this is enough for you to end suffering because my goal is to help you to end suffering. And it is, it is remarkable how Buddha only spoke the the important words 
to end suffering and he didn't he didn't want to talk anything about unbeneficial things you know the mm-hmm. most of the talks and uh, conversations arguments debates and many things in this world they finally become unbeneficial they don't help us to get rid of our defilements to gain pay, peace enlightenment freedom from suffering they don't lead that's why we are still in this sansara namo bhutaya bhante i remember when uh, i first heard bhante explain dependent origination and i just want to make sure i i'm remembering something correctly uh, was it when bhante was explaining from dependent origination why uh, form feeling uh, and all the other um, elements are uh, non self i remember bhante saying that it's the one of the primary reasons is because they are impermanent they rise and then they disappear and they change so they're not able to anything that's not permanent is not something that we can consider self mm-hmm. things that we cannot control uh we cannot consider as self and yes. virtually everything is impermanent mm-hmm. and that's why there is no self is that mm-hmm. correct yeah yeah that's why buddha is yadani chantan dukkham whatever is impermanent is painful suffering uh yan dukkham tadanatta whatever is painful is non self so buddha teaches if we develop wisdom we will understand these three aspects or characteristics of any condition thing impermanence suffering or unsatisfactoriness and non self In, including pleasant feelings too right yeah, and yeah, pleasant feeling is a part of the un, a part of the conditioned world conditioned things feelings are um in that category of conditioned things form feelings perceptions thoughts consciousness yes mm-hmm. 